time will be free. We will not avert our eyes. Palestine will be one more time. Sing, Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. We will not avert our eyes. Palestine will be free. Good morning. Welcome to this worship service hosted by Christians for a Free Palestine. You can clap. I am Reverend Naomi Washington Leapart. I'm based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I am proud and honored to serve as one of the volunteer leaders of Christians for a Free Palestine. We are called to worship in these tragic times. We are called to give an account for the ways in which Christians have been responsible. Christians are culpable for the exportation of toxic theologies that underwrite genocide. Christians need to be accountable. And so we're here today to be that account and to bear witness to these terrible, tragic times. We're gonna open with a song called We Rise. Say that with me, We Rise. We Rise. As you pick up the words, as you get comfortable, I want you to sing with your loudest praise. The words say, we rise humbly hearted, rise won't be divided, rise with spirit to guide us, rise. All right? Let's sing together. We rise. Humbly hearted, rise, won't be divided, won't be divided, rise, with spirit, with spirit to guide us, rise, now you got it now, we rise, we rise, humbly hearted, rise, With hope, with hope in prayer, in prayer, we find ourselves here in hope, in prayer, we're right here, we're right here, in hope, in hope, in prayer, clap your hands, in hope, in prayer, we're right here, we're so we rise, we rise. Rise with tears and with courage. 
courage. With tears and courage. Rise. Fighting for life. Fighting for life. Rise. Rise. Let's repeat. We rise here. We rise. Humbly hearted. Humbly hearted. Rise. I'm going to bring up to the mic my comrade Jonathan Brenneman who's going to offer us our opening prayer. Let's give him a hand as he comes. Thank you, Reverend Naomi. Let us pray as Jesus taught us to, to pray. On, in, on the plain, Jesus prayed blessings and woes. So I offer these today. Blessed are the peacemakers of Palestine, and woe to those who wage war. Blessed are the Palestinian people, and woe to those who profit from their death. Blessed is a ceasefire. Woe to those who perpetuate this genocide. And woe to the Christian Zionists who believe that this is God's will. May all those trying to stop this slaughter be blessed. And we are blessed this morning to have one of those Palestinians working to stop this slaughter. Reverend Mitri Raheb, who is a pastor, an author, a community organizer, and has taken time out of his very busy DC delegation to speak to us this morning. Thank you, Reverend Mitchell. Good morning. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, great to be with you this morning, and thank you for taking the time coming from all over across the United States to be here at the Capitol Hill for this very important uh, morning. I bring you greetings from Palestine, the country that for the last hundred years is fighting to be free. And I have with me two colleagues, Reverend Jack Sara and uh, Shireen Awad uh, there. You know, it's already six months we are in the seventh month of this genocide. Already over 33,000 people were murdered in this war. Over 75,000 people injured. The destruction in Gaza, 65% of the buildings are destroyed. We have 11 universities in, in Gaza all of them destroyed, fully destroyed. The last university campus to be destroyed was ours, Dar al Kalima University campus, just this last week. During Lent, uh, Holy Week, uh, this is when the Israeli airstrike actually leveled down our campus in Gaza. This is a university that focuses on arts and culture. It was the cultural hub. One of the cultural, main cultural hubs in Gaza is no more there. Our staff, many of them have been murdered. Our students, we lost counts of where they are. Today is the last day for Muslims in this Ramadan, the fasting period. But you know, Muslims and Christians in Gaza have been fasting not for 29 days, but for six months. Six months, actually, starvation was weaponized against our people to bring them on their knees. And you know, this is not a war between Israel and Hamas, as I hear it all the time here in the American news. This is a war against the whole Palestinian people. It is the war actually aiming at displacing 
two million people out of the Gaza Strip so that some of the Israeli settlers can have again their mansions on the white sands of Gaza, as one of the uh, Israeli settlers put it. Whoa. But you know, we are not fighting Israel alone. For the last hundred years since the Balfour Declaration, we have been fighting the empire. <laughs> or better, the empire has been fighting us. That's right. That's right. That's right. For hundred years, day after days, Israel was receiving actually all the hardware and all the software actually to bring our people to extinction. And yet we keep rising. Yes. Yes. Yet we keep rising. Yes. Yes. We often ask ourselves, how long, O Lord, we feel this long Saturday. It's not one day, it's not two days, it's not six months. It's over a hundred years, but yet our people prove to be resilience. So the empire fight us with the hardware, all of these toys that Israel gets from, for free from, yeah. 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 right? Yeah. The F-35 and you name it, all the jets, the dumb bomb. I wonder actually if not one of these bombs that were donated to Israel was the one that actually destroyed our campus in Gaza. Mm -hmm. I would like this, you know, I would like people to, to investigate that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so these are the hardware, but what is more difficult is the software. And the software is provided, unfortunately, by many seminaries, wow. by Christian Zionism. Wow. And by Jewish Zionism. I mean, you heard Netanyahu talking about Amalek, right? Go kill everyone, don't leave anyone there. That's this kind of Jewish Zionism. But you have also the Christian Zionism who believe actually they want to bring all the Jews to Palestine so that two thirds of them will be killed, the last third will convert to Christianity and Jesus will come again. What kind of theology is this? It is not theology, actually. Calling it theology would be actually a disaster. It is religious nationalism as ideology made to religion. This is what it is. And this is why when people keep asking me, what is your profession? Sometimes I tell them, okay, I'm a pastor, a president of a university. But at the end of the day, I'm in the software cracking business. Sisters and brothers, we need to crack this software that keep actually sending bombs, not food, to our people in Gaza. You cannot actually, you cannot fight the people in the name of God because coming from Bethlehem, we believe that the divine became human in Bethlehem 2000 years ago so that every human life, irrespective if they are Christians, Muslim, Jews, it's sanctified. Life is sanctified. This is what we need to actually to defend. And I think this is why you are here. You are here to fight for life against all these forces of militarization. You know, unfortunately, we live in a, in a time when our world has been spending so much money on militarization like never, ever before. And what is really striking is that Israel is weaponizing artificial intelligence, using it in real time on real people in Gaza to develop their new instruments of death. But we are the children of resurrection. All the forces of death were not able to keep Jesus in the tomb. And I tell you, the empire after 100 years was not able to put us in the tomb. Yes, often we feel we are, you know, behind this huge stone and we keep asking who will move away the stone. 
but our people proved to be very resilient. And I think this is what makes Israel, but also many other countries mad, that they were not able to kill that love for life, that thirst for freedom. And this is why, sisters and brothers, Palestine will be free. <laughs> Palestine will be free and we will not be sit down until that happens. Thank you for taking the time to fight for Palestine, to fight actually for the values that this place is supposed to stand for. Right. right? But we know this country has also a history of settler colonialism That's right. That's right. that our Native American has been enduring for over 400 years. And we know that this country with all the nice uh, values that uh, uh, we know about it, it was also the country that actually legalized racial discrimination and segregation. And it is this country that continue to support Israel with their settler colonial project. Our task, therefore, is we need to dismantle this settler colonial project. That's right. That's to dismantle right. the settler colonial project in Israel so that Jews, Christians and Muslims, Palestinians and Israeli can really live in peace, enjoy a future for their children and grandchildren. That's the only option we have. We have no other option. Right. So let's keep the fight until Palestine is free. So free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Thank you. invite you to join me in the prayer of confession that is printed in your program. We will read it and say it together. Justice loving God, we stand today on blood soaked land we have inherited from a centuries long theological heritage of violence that was born in the genocide of the indigenous and perfected by the enslavement and segregation of black people. The legacy of American violence continues as our nation subsidizes Israel's apartheid regime. We confess that this violence has always relied on Christian theologies that we have been slow to reject. We confess that we have looked away and done nothing for far too long. We will not ask forgiveness again, since this is a sin that is within our power to stop. We ask only for the courage to try again, to work harder to change, to commit to action that ensures that Palestine will be free. The good news is that when we confess with authenticity and vulnerability, there is grace available to try again to work harder, to commit to action. And so in this moment, we receive the grace of God by taking an action. In your program, there is a little script for you to reference. As you call, email, or message on social media, the two chaplains who invoke the name of God in the House and Senate chambers. Amen. Chaplain Barry C. Black, who is the Senate chaplain, and Chaplain Margaret Kibben, who is the House of Representatives chaplain. What we want you to do right now is take out your phone and use that script in this moment of grace to take action to compel those chaplains to invoke free Palestine in their prayers at the cha Senate chamber and at the House chamber. We want them to say in their prayers that Gaza should be free, that Palestine should be free, that all who live under occupation, that all who live under apartheid should be free. So take out your scripts, take out your phones, call, text, write these two chaplains. We'll give you a minute now.
Why don't we, as we do this, let's sing Palestine Will Be Free as we take this action. You can hum it, you can sing it, but let's surround ourselves with this song. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. We will not govern our lives. Palestine will be free. 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 Palestine What is his position? Can you tell me? What is his position? Can you tell me on the Israel-Palestinian situation? On the floor of the Senate, he should be calling for a ceasefire in his prayers. That's what we, that's what we ask. I'm inviting to the podium now a friend, a comrade, a sister in the struggle, Rabbi Alyssa Wise, who has been on this journey for a long time, who taught me how to be in solidarity with Palestine. Let's give Rabbi Alyssa a hand as she comes. Hi, everyone. Thank you for including me today. Thank you for coming. <laughs> In the book of Proverbs 3.27, we read, Do not withhold good from one who deserves it when you have the power to do it. Your organizing as Christians for a free Palestine is such a powerful demonstration of this sacred obligation. The primary importance of today is what this renewed attention to Christian Zionism will mean for the future of Palestinians' ability to live freely in their land. It will likewise be critical in the work here in the U.S. as Christian nationalism's influence on policymaking escalates in terrifying ways. 
It also speaks volumes to Jews as a sign of solidarity and friendship. Addressing Christian Zionism means sharing the burden of the ways that our religious traditions have been instrumentalized to establish and maintain the state of Israel. It allows us to point to a broader problem in the history of Zionism, an unholy alliance between Christian and Jewish Zionists on a political project with today, over a century later, we are the inheritors of. We all need to be doing all we can with compassion, with rigor, to organize our community to politically and theologically divest from nationalism and so we could be much more effective together. Yes. My work in the Jewish community to safeguard the moral center of Judaism, a centuries old rich religious and cultural tradition is aided by your work in Christian communities. I sincerely hope likewise my work helps yours. Yes. 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 Visibilizing Christian Zionism means enhancing our ability to effectively challenge Zionism as it manifests so viciously today. Obscuring Christian Zionism's influence on modern day political Zionism, as has been the case for far too long, makes it harder to confront. This is particularly true in light of the dangerous conflation between Zionism and Judaism. When Zionism is framed as solely a Jewish communal phenomenon, we are missing important pillars that are holding up U.S. support for Israel and therefore our abilities to topple those pillars over. Right. Right. After all, Zionism is a political problem with Jewish and overwhelmingly Christian adherents. Remember, there are more members of Christians United for Israel than the entire population of American Jews. Challenging Christian Zionism means challenging anti-Semitism. The reality of the state of Israel was fueled by Christian Zionism long before the state was established. This was based on ideas that are hostile to Judaism and that have incited intense violence against Jews. Through this work, we have an opportunity and the sacred obligation to challenge the toxic stew of anti-Palestinian racism, Islamophobia, and anti-Semitism together. I know how challenging this work is to organize your own families and congregants and friends. It means so much that you are stepping up to do this. It means putting at risk communal comfort to live in accordance with your values. But this is what God asks of us. Your work is a love letter to our children, and I am deeply grateful to you for that. Your work embodies the mandate passed on to us from my spiritual mentor, pastor and anti-Nazi activist, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. From his prison cell before the Nazis hanged him for his organizing, he wrote, the ultimate question for a responsible person to ask is not how one is to extricate themselves heroically from the affair, but how the coming generation is to live. Thank you. I just learned that today is the anniversary of Dietrich Bonhoeffer's death. Oh my gosh. He came to me. Yes. 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 Spirit is here. Spirit is here. In Christian tradition, we pass the peace in community, right? Today, we're going to pass the peace, but we're going to pass the kind of peace that is not the absence of tension but the kind of peace that is the presence of justice. So as we pass, now I'm aware that we're living in COVID times. So why don't we put our hands over our hearts and turn to each other and pass the peace by saying yes to, here's another one of Bonhoeffer's classics, the cost of discipleship. The cost of following Jesus is that sometimes the peace we demand 
makes people uncomfortable. Sometimes it inconveniences people. So today we pass the kind of peace that is a yes. I pass the peace that is my yes to you. Peace be with you. Let's pass together. Just look at somebody and pass the peace as a reinforcement of your yes. Next, I'm going to invite to the microphone Reverend Christo Silva McCormick, who is a scholar, a pastor, a theologian. She is going to lead us in the litany of lament as found in our program. Friends, join me in this litany of lament, not just for Gaza, but for all of Palestine, we lament no solo para Gaza, sino por, a, por todo el pueblo palestino. I have a message from God in my heart concerning the evil violence. Oh, that's how that is mine. The evil violence in the desert, the lies of the powerful, the obstinance of the genociders. There is no fear of God before their eyes. In their own eyes they, are they are no longer subject to critique and see themselves as big and mighty, too much to detect or hate their sin. The words of their mouths are self-serving. They fail to act wisely or do good. Even on their beds, they plot evil. They commit themselves to the way of domination and genocide and do not reject what is wrong. Your love, Lord, reaches the babies in Palestine and Israel, and wherever there is life and love, your faithfulness is vast, abundant, and ineffable, like the air we breathe to the starry sky. Your righteousness is like the peak of possibilities, your justice like the depths beyond our understanding. You, Lord, preserve all of creation. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God, People take refuge in the tender embrace of your spirit. They feast on food that nourishes. The inundation of your blessing, feasts of hope, and the abundance of all humanity. You give them drink from your rivers of clean water. For with you is the source of hope, the treasure that never rusts or decays. In your light we see the possibility of peace and the truth that sets Palestine free. May Palestine be free. Amen. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. And for our New Testament reading, I bring to the mic the Reverend Michael Vanacor, who is the pastor of Pilgrim United Church of Christ in Wheaton, Maryland. The Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 6, verses 20 to 21 and 24 to 25. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. This is the word of God for the people of God. If I must die, you must live to tell my story, to sell my things, to buy a piece of cloth and some strings, 
make it white with a long tail. So that a child somewhere in Gaza, while looking heaven in the eye, awaiting his dad who left in a blaze and bid no one farewell, not even to his flesh, not even to himself, sees the kite, my kite you made, flying up above and thinks for a moment an angel is there bringing back love. If I must die, let it bring hope. <coughs> let it be a story. Palestinian writer, poet, professor, activist, Rifat al wrote this poem before he was killed in an Israeli airstrike on December 6th, 2023. After his death, the Euro Mediterranean Human Rights Monitor, which is an independent nonprofit human rights organization, released a statement saying that Alarir was apparently deliberately targeted, quote, surgically bombed out of the entire building, and end quote, and came after weeks of, quote, death threats that Rifat received online and by phone from Israeli accounts. During Israel's 2021 assault on Gaza, Alarir wrote an opinion piece for the New York Times. And he ended the piece recounting a conversation he had had with his eight-year-old daughter. This is the conversation. On Tuesday, he says, Lena asked her question again after my wife and I didn't answer it the first time. Can they destroy our building if the power is out? I wanted to say, yes, little Lena, Israel can still destroy the beautiful Al Jahara building or any of our buildings in the darkness. Each of our homes is full of tales and stories that must be told. Our homes annoy the Israeli war machine, mock it, haunt it, even in the darkness. It can't abide their existence. And with American tax dollars and international immunity, Israel presumably will go on destroying our buildings until there is nothing left. He wrote, but I can't tell Lena any of this, so I lie. No, sweetie, they can't see us in the dark. As we come to the communion table this morning, I'm thinking about the devastatingly unjust task of preparing your friends and family for your murder. What a grotesque reality, a reality that like Alarir said about his own reality, influences every move and every decision you make. Jesus sat down at what many biblical scholars agree was a Passover Seder, a meal that was supposed to be a celebration of freedom, of uprising, of escape. And he prepared his friends for his own capture. He knew he was an enemy of the Roman state and he knew he would be killed in a matter of days. And like Rifat Alarir spared his daughter, Jesus didn't tell his disciples all the details. He didn't tell them that he would be humiliated by the spitting of the crowd and the crown of thorns placed on his head. He didn't tell them that they would whip him until his skin would hang from his body. He didn't tell him everything. He knew the details would be filled in by their witness. He knew that not only could they not protect him, but also that many of them would be so afraid, so desperate, so intimidated, so conscripted, that they would actually betray him and deny him and desert him. But as best he could, Jesus, because he still loved them, wanted to prepare them to trek the lonely road of his horrific suffering. This is the kind of love that militarism cultivates. This is the kind of love that is born out of political betrayal and moral bankruptcy, 
This is the kind of love that is hewn from the stones of state arrogance and corrupted theology, or maybe it ain't theology, like Reverend Mitri said. This is the kind of love that is underwritten by tax dollars used to fund a genocide. This meal, y'all, ain't just another meal. Let me say that again. This meal ain't just another meal. This table is our regular reminder that we are called to live in a way that may in fact hasten our death. Let me say that again. This table is a reminder that we are called to live in a way that may in fact hasten our death. Because we are enemies of injustice, because we embarrass the state by our refusal to accept its ways. This table is where we come to prepare for what will happen to us once we leave the table. Don't come to this table again without remembering that at this table, Jesus had a conversation with his friends and he said, I'm about to die. When we remember, we remember this. I'm calling to the mic now, my friend, my comrade, the Reverend Alba de Onofrio, who is gonna take us to the table. So many of us were raised with a theology that told us that the blood of an innocent was required on the altar of an angry God. What if we look at this table and recognize that the body and the blood of the divine was not given as a sacrifice for our sins, but rather as a reminder that as enemies of the state, i.e. as people who demand justice, i.e. people who understand the message of a Palestinian Jew who said, the truth that I have in my soul given to me by God is actually more important than me being safe. Mm. The reality is we have the choice and we have the responsibility. This is God's table. It's on no one to take that invitation away. It is an invitation to every person, regardless of faith, tradition, confessional status, gender identity, sexual orientation, nationality, papers, whatever. It is God's table that is open and willing, but let us be clear at the same time that the mantle of discipleship sometimes is a heavy one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as we take the bread of life, let it be nourishment for our journey in the resistance that we give to empire. Let us take on and understand that the mantle of discipleship does not require us to be on our knees begging for forgiveness from a white blue eyed Jesus, but rather <laughs> us asking how we serve the divine in this new creation and being called to life and what is possible and what is true but only possible and only true if we the hands the feet the voices the activists the lovers the parents the grandparents the pastors and the faith leaders make that so so please come to the table if you are someone who needs gluten-free just approach the table um, and do we have volunteers for the... Yes, uh, let's have our volunteers come forward. Before we take, we remember, we remember that on the night Jesus was... Come here. On the night, on the night. Oh, it's better now. On that night. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> My check. <laughs> on the night Jesus was taken as an enemy of the Roman state. That's right. Deserted by his friends, denied by his friends. He sat at table yes, and he took bread and after giving thanks for it, he broke it. And he gave it to them and said, take, eat, all of you. This is for you. And every time you eat, remember me. A little later on in the meal, he took the wine and he poured the cup.
he spilled a little bit. <laughs> and he gave it to his friends and he said, take this drink. This is the cup of my blood given for you. Every time you drink this cup, remember me. We have gluten-free options up here, so if you need that, come get your gluten-free option up here. And our volunteers will pass. Oh, it, it already left. The yeah. volunteers will pass you your communion cup, all right? We'll go down each row. The cup and the juice are together, all right? It's a little handy-dandy to go communion cup. As you pass to your neighbor, why don't you just say the bread of life and the cup of life for you, all right? As you pass, the bread of life and the cup of life for you. by Jewish songwriter Shoshana, Shoshana Jedwab. It's called Where You Go. Please sing with me. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. For your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. This is juice, just FYI, in Your case people were people wondering for children. It's just juice. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. For your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. For your people are my people. Your people are mine. 
Your people are my people. You're divine, my divine. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in him and you will not thirst. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in him and you will not thirst. Eat this bread, drink this cup, Come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup. Trust in him and you will not thirst. The fact is that not only is the meal nourishing, but so is community. As we end this communion time, let's sing the song, I Need You to Survive. That's really ultimately why we're here. We need Palestine to be free so that we can be free. You have the words printed in your bulletin. It goes like this. I need you, you need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Commit with me, we're all a part of God's body. It is God's will that every need be supplied. You are important to me, I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Let's sing it to each other, right? I need you. Sing now. I need you. You need me. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me, commit with me, commit with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is God's will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are important to me. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Let's sing that again. You are important to me. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Amen, amen, amen. Have all been fed? Yes, all right. We will pray like Jesus taught us to pray in the words of Reverend Alba as printed in your bulletin. Our mother who dwells among us, hallowed be thy names. Thy love shall reign and peace remain on earth as it is in heaven. And give to us now your holy power to fight for our liberation as we resist those who seek our domination and lead us not to desperation, but deliver us to the new creation. For life has the power and yours the glory and ours the freedom forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Now there's a team of us who are gonna have lunch together later. And so what I want that team to do is to come forward 
kind of to the front. Let's make a circle of all of the lunchtime prayer team, okay? Lunchtime prayer team, you know who you are. Come forward, come forward. Let's make a little circle right here. Let's make a circle. Or maybe a you. Let's make a you. So your backs aren't to me, but you're... Uh-huh. All right. Now, if you're not on the lunchtime prayer team, that's okay. I'm going to give you something to do. Listen, I want you to stretch your hands toward the lunchtime prayer team. Stretch your hands, stretch your hands. And you're going to hum with us bread for the journey. The, the words are in the, in the program. It goes, give us bread for the journey. Give us bread. Somebody snap with me. Give us bread for the journey. Give us bread. When our legs are getting heavy. When our legs are getting heavy. And we're hanging down our heads. Give us bread for the journey. Give us bread. Let's sing it one more time with your hands outstretched. Give us bread for the journey. Give us bread. Yes. Give us bread for the journey. Give us bread. Mm -hmm. When our legs are getting heavy, and we're hanging down our heads. Down our heads. Give us bread for the journey. Give us bread. All right, now let's continue to hum. Let's hum it. Now let's hum it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Octavia Butler wrote this. There is no end to what a living world will demand of you. There is no end to what a living world will demand of you. This world has demanded us to forgo leisure and rest and comfort and safety for the sake of justice, for the sake of freedom. And in this fight against Christian Zionism, in this fight for the freedom of Palestinian people. I know that you have probably already given up belonging in some ways. Belonging in certain spaces, in certain conversations, in certain relationships. You've surrendered to a call that's beyond you. You've given yourself over to the work you feel obligated to. And I want you to know lunchtime prayer team that by your presence by your commitment to holding a nation accountable a nation that often ignores and mocks and abuses protesters abuses dissenters even when what the world needs most is dissent and protest you are a delight in God's eyes hear me you are a delight in God's eyes and you are the hope we need for these tragic times I know that for many of you on the lunchtime prayer team this is your first time having lunch this way this is your first time putting your flesh on the line in this way 
for you as my comrade Reverend Alba said this morning this is a baptism into a different kind of faithfulness we honor your baptism today I don't know if you're feeling like I'm feeling but I I feel like all my sanctuaries have been threatened my places of refuge, my soft places to land are all on fire right now. I feel like I don't have time to cry. I don't have time to dance. I don't know when to laugh. Let this community right here be your sanctuary. Today and tomorrow, feel the energy from our outstretched arms. Know that you got people who have your back. Know that our prayers of words are going to accompany you, the prayers of your feet. And we bless you for this next part of the day. May you know and feel our interwovenness with all life. May you experience being held by the power of our ancestors in the struggle. May the gifts we carry from our tradition, make us braver. May the words of our hands transform the mundane into the sacred. And in turn, may sacred time transform us. May God's delight in your holy work today, at lunch, fill your heart with hope. May we all get free. May we all get free. May we all get free. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Go with God. Go with God's power. Go with God's might. Go with God's mercy. Go with God's love. May we all get free. The last song we're going to sing together says, we're going to rise up, rise up till it comes. Till it's one. I keep getting that wrong. Till it comes and till it's one. When the people rise up, what happens? The powers come down. They try to stop us, but what? We keep coming back. All right, y'all ready to sing? This is our closing song, so sing it with your full voice. All right? We're going to rise up, rise up till it comes. We're going to rise up, rise up till it's one. We're going to rise. We're going to rise up, rise up till it's one. We. We're going to rise up, rise up till it's one. When the people rise up. Powers come down. When the people rise up, powers come down. When the people rise up, when the people rise up, the powers come down. When the people rise up, the people rise up, the powers come down. They try to stop us, but we keep coming back. They try to stop us, they try to stop us. But we keep coming back. They try to stop us. They try to stop us. But we keep coming back. One more time. They try. They try to stop us. But we keep coming back. So what are we going to do? We're going to rise up here. We're going to rise up. Rise up till it's one. We. We're going to rise up. Rise up till it's one. Because when the people rise up. When the people rise up. The powers come down. When the people come rise up, rise up. The powers come down. When the people rise up, rise up. The power comes down. When the people rise up, rise up. The powers come down. They try to stop us, but we keep coming back. They try, they try to stop us. But we keep coming back. They try. They try to stop us. But we keep coming back. They try. They try to stop us. But we keep coming back. They try. They try to stop us. But we keep coming back. So we're going to rise up. We're going to rise up.
your hands together. Amen. Amen. So our lunchtime prayer teams are going to get organized into their spokes. Y'all know what I mean. Y'all know what I mean. So let's get ourselves organized. Thank you so much for your joyous participation in this worship service. You all keep praying for us. Keep praying for us. Amen. <laughs> 